Hill family, welcome to church. We're so excited for Pastor Tracy's message this morning. Uh, just settle in, prepare for the Word of God to be delivered. It's our desire, Brian, that you'll feel the same powerful Holy Spirit wherever you're at that we feel right here at service today. God bless you. We'll come back and talk to you after service and share a few things with you. Let's get church started. Let's do it. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Um, you may be seated. It's good to be in God's house today. Um, I want to start by saying thank you uh, so much for the, uh, uh, for the appreciation, for the, uh, the gift that you got, Vicki and I, and, and uh, we're grateful. We are truly grateful. I tell you, the, the ministry doesn't happen without all the people in our church doing what they do. Uh, we could come here on a Sunday and I could, I could pour out my heart to um, an empty place. Uh, I could pour out my heart to one or two people. And would, would that still be something God wants us to do? I believe he, he's called me to do that, just that, to speak. But I thank God for the people that are part of the ministry here. This could not happen every week like it happens without the people here. And, and for the past few weeks, we've acknowledged all the different ministries, but I gotta tell you, we have something going all the time here. If you're not involved in it, then, then uh, starting off Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, there's a group of people, uh, more mature people that come and meet here on Tuesday morning, and, and they'll, they'll meet here from 10, is it 10 or 10.30? 10.30 to, to, to noon, yeah. Uh, and, and they'll be here, and they'll minister to a group of people. And then Tuesday night, the, the Hill House is, is full of men, anywhere from 12 to 20 guys that'll show up on a Tuesday night and study God's Word together. And, and boy, they become a family, quite a family. I mean, they, they, are, they have bonded together in a special way, those guys that show up there. And, and we'd love for you to be a part of that if you're not already on Tuesday nights. And then, then Wednesday night, we have, we have a group. I used to call them the young adults, now I just call them the adults uh, in their 30s. And, and uh, some are getting close to that other age. Um, but they gather together along with the children's ministry that takes place and, and child care. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening. So, so Tuesday day, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday sometimes we have a, a, a ladies Bible study not going on right now, but, but at, at times. And then Thursday night we have a, a, another mature group of people that get together. And, and I was blessed this week to be able to speak to that group, I, I've been off for several weeks in a row, for like four or five weeks, I haven't uh, spoken on Thursday night, and so I was able to bring you back to foundation, and we talked about the resurrection. I tell you, I, I, I had a wonderful time on Thursday night. In child care, we had not only child care, but we also have youth's meeting. Youth is meeting on that night, and, and let me tell you, they, they get going in there. Sometimes I can hear them, but it's wonderful. Ministry only happens when people get a passion for doing something for God. And I wish more would grab the passion. Grab, grab a hold of the passion. I, I preach to you even this morning because I have a passion to see things change in your life. Today, I hope the Spirit of God brings about some change in your life because I know He's still changing me. I look out, and, and maybe some of you have arrived. I've not arrived. I, I'm, not, I'm not perfected. Matter of fact, ask my wife. I have a lot of flaws. She won't tell them to you, I'm sure, because she loves me so much. But I'm not perfect. God's still changing me. He's still, he's still making changes in me all the time. Some, some, some are really, really good and, and, and have been needed for years. And others, others uh, I don't even recognize them happening, but they're happening in my life. I'm so grateful for the Spirit of God that's moving and active in my life. Amen? Amen. I, I'm struggling with a way to start this message because I have so many different things I'd like to say this morning. But I guess the main thing is I would like to see change. I'd like to see change. I, I'm not for change 
of, of this. this. This can never change. Our God cannot change. He will not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. But let me tell you, he's got a hold of me and changed me a lot. He's changed me a lot. And I've needed that change. And, and you need some more change. And, and let me, I don't mean to get the angry pointing finger, but you need some change too. We need some change this world. If you've been watching, if you've been watching television lately, let me tell you, we need some change in this world, don't we? Amen. We need, we need some morality to come back. We need, we need the Spirit of God to once again, you know, flow over the United States of America and transform our hearts, our minds, our lives. Our very thinking needs to be changed. I did something this week I've, I've never done personally. Now, I think my, my parts of my family have done this, but I've never done this before. I voted early. I voted early. I got out of that, I got out of that voting place and I, I voted early. I'm ready. I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for, I'm ready for, you know, is, is, is my vote going to change the culture? No, but let me tell you, we need a little more time. We need a little more time to rescue a few more people. There's a few more people that need to be rescued. There's a few more people that have the concept of, of life wrong. There's a few more people that need to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. And let me tell you, I can get upset about it. Have, has anybody else been there? I've been turning off the television a lot more lately. I, I've been having to mute some stuff. I, I, I'm, I, I've gotten angry. I've gotten even a little bitter at times. And, and I tell you, that, that's a spirit that's not from God to come into our heart. And, and let me tell you, I, I'll be honest, I have some, I do definitely practice righteous indignation. And, and I believe a lot of times my anger is righteous anger. Uh, some of you are getting quiet. Sometimes it isn't as righteous as it should be. <laughs> Sometimes my anger is not as righteous as it should be. But God wants me to be transformed. We've been studying the book of Jeremiah, and we're going to take a break just this Sunday. Next week, next week we're going to get back on it, and it's a tough, tough uh, passage that we're going to be reading next week in Jeremiah. But this week, I wanted to try to change gears because I wanted to say thank you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. you. Say, I don't do anything. Yes, you do. You, you, you being here does something for me. There's a verse we're going to study in a little while that, that's from Paul about how he's encouraged by the people that come to hear him and see him. And I'm encouraged. And I'm given strength and encouragement because of many of you. And I thank you. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 21. Look carefully then how you walk. Hey Amen. Is that important? As the older you get, it's even more important. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of, of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, not the Spirit of this world, the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit. Dressing one another with, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and in everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Father, anoint me to speak your word today. Lord, and right now, touch my mom, Lord. As she's in the hospital in Springfield, Lord. Touch her body, Lord. You know the healing that she needs. Minister to her, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. I appreciate my mom and my dad raising me and bringing me to a point that God was able to speak to my heart and change my heart. Amen? Amen. I will not have time. I will not have time to give you five points today, but I have five points. So here they are. In case I don't get them out, you're going to have them, and maybe sometime before the end of the year, I'll get back and give you the rest of them. But point number one is, thank God for the material blessings that he has given you. Is it important to thank God for the material blessings he's given you? Yes, it is. It's very important. Number two is thank God for the people in your life. And, and we're going to cover that hopefully today also. I'll get those first two probably. But the ones I probably won't get to talk about today are these. Thank God in the midst of trial and even persecution. We may incorporate that into next week's message. And then uh, uh, number four, thank God especially for his salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen? And number five, thank God for his continued presence and power in your life. And I'll tell you, I want his continued power and presence in my life. I want, I want to have a passion for Christ the rest of my life. I want to preach with a passion that, that God has given me to see hearts and minds and lives changed by the power of the gospel. Amen? I want to see you change today in this manner. I want God to give you a thankful heart. As I told you, there's a lot going on in our world today. A lot of stuff that, that makes me angry and upset. But I've got to tell you, I need every once in a while to be brought back into rain and be brought back into the crowd and said, Tracy, you've got to go out again, but you've got to get a thankful heart. You've got to, you've got to develop that thankful heart. I know of a man, didn't meet him personally, but I know of this man who's... Who, who's, Who's, who as he sat there and he would listen, he would hear footsteps coming down the corridor and he never knew if those next set of footprints, foot, footsteps would be someone taking him to be executed. He was unjustly accused. He had separated from his friends in a dank, dark, cramped prison cell. His bed was a hard, cold stone floor. His wrist and his ankles were raw from the iron chains that held him. If ever a person had a right to complain, it was this man languishing in a Roman prison. But instead of complaining, his lips rang with the words of praise and thanksgiving. Who was this man? Most all of you know who this was. It was the Apostle Paul, as we read from Ephesians, and we're going to read on from in Ephesians in just a minute. But the Apostle Paul, a man who had learned the meaning of true thanksgiving, even in the midst of adversity, Paul had learned to have a heart of thanksgiving. Earlier when he was in prison in Rome, Paul wrote, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Verse 20 is the powerful one. Giving thanks sometimes. When things are going good, when you feel like it. No, <laughs> giving thanks always, always, and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the Apostle Paul. I'm thankful that he wasn't a once a year appreciation kind of guy. We have that here in America. We have, we have that, that, that celebration, it's called Thanksgiving, and everybody's supposed to be thankful. I gotta tell you, I, I'm glad Paul wasn't that kind of man. Paul was a guy that, that, that he was transformed to be a thankful guy all the time. You got to remember if you think about if you think about Paul the apostle Paul before his conversion do you think he was thankful No I don't think he was thankful matter of fact if if you think about his life before his conversion what was he doing he was going around persecuting and even murdering followers of Jesus Christ Now is is it difficult to 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 murder somebody or kill somebody that you're thankful for? 
We don't have any serial killers here. I don't think we do. Maybe in the hearts you're one, but uh, uh, <laughs> here's what we have. It's difficult. It's, it would be difficult to kill somebody that you're thankful for. If you're truly thankful for somebody, it makes it difficult. And, and that's why one of my prayers every morning, please make Vicki thankful for me. She, she feeds me. She, she, I, I never quit. She just sets something before me. She gives me pills. I just take them. She could poison me in a heartbeat. I'd be dead tomorrow if she wanted me to be dead tomorrow. But here's what I want. If she's thankful for me, then what? She's not going to want to kill me. She, she's going to love me. It, it changes her whole perspective perspective about me because believe me I'm I'm trouble I know, I know Roger said some nice things and, and and Jeremy has said some nice things about me but let me tell you I'm trouble just like you are and guys we're 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 evil to the core I know you don't think that but you just think about it for a few minutes if you if you knew if you knew if you knew you could do something and it would you would never get caught. You would, there would never be, there would be no consequences for it, for that action that you were going to do. Boy, wouldn't it be tempted to do it? Some of you are smiling big because you've got some things in your heart right now. But no, God, God's plan is not for that to be. It's, its plan is for us to love one another and be thankful for one another. Paul, Paul, his life was transformed from, from constantly being angry that, that these, these people, these Jewish people and, and, these, and these Gentile people, were, and there weren't a lot of Gentiles doing it at the time, but these Jewish people, they're walking away. They're walking away from the God of Abraham and serving this guy named Jesus that they say rose from the dead. I don't believe him. I don't trust him. I don't like him. I'm going to put him in prison. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't like him at all. And I'm not thankful for him because I want to eliminate him. And so the Spirit of God transformed him, though, that he becomes not that, but he becomes a guy that says, give thanks always, no matter the circumstances. Now, that's a tough pill to swallow sometimes, guys. Being thankful for God's blessing should be one of the most distinct marks of a believer in Jesus Christ. And what have we done as a church? We, we've, we've not made that a theme of our church as being thankful. It's, it's important that we become thankful or that we, we uh, especially in this day that we live, because, because there's a spirit of ingratitude in our, in our culture today. In our world today, there's a, there's a hardening of our hearts uh, and, and a destroying of our relationship with Jesus Christ and our friends and family and the world. Ultimately, somebody that's, that's, that has a heart or a mind of ingratitude, a spirit of ingratitude, you know what? Ultimately, they are somebody you don't want to be around. People that, that, that aren't thankful are people that I don't want to, I don't want to associate with a lot of times. Why should I do something for somebody if they're not going to be grateful or thankful for it? You know, the, the thing is, somebody with a heart and mind of ingratitude, it introduces bitterness into their life, selfishness, and, and dis, ultimately they become dissatisfied people. And quickly it begins to affect their heart and they become people that are ungrateful about anything and everything that's done for them. A critical spirit comes into their heart and they begin to think critically about everything that somebody even attempts to do for them. Amen. And nothing will be, nothing will be, nothing will do more to restore your contentment than to be transformed into having a grateful heart. 
You, you can become more contented if you will what? If you will embrace an attitude of gratitude. A spirit of, of, of being thankful for the things that are, that are happening in your life and going on in your life. And, and let me tell you, I don't enjoy everything that happens in my life. The, the last few weeks I've been torn many, many different directions. But you know what? I am thankful that God has kept his hand on me through everything that I've encountered the last couple of weeks. I'm grateful for him. I'm thankful for him. I, I'm appreciative to him. Do I tell him? I tell him a lot. I, 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 show, I show, I hope, probably not enough, but I show a lot of gratitude towards the Lord. How many of you still pray over your meals? Some of you pray over your meals? I mean, it, I, I find it, I think it's important to pray over your meal. Even in restaurants, I still pray over our meal. I'm not as loud as Bill Hayes when he prays over the meal at restaurant, but I am. I, I still, we, we bow our heads. Vicki and I have made a, a new habit. We, we, it's not real new. We've been doing it for a long time, but we hold hands when we pray over our meal. And, uh, you know, the, usually the first thing I do is thank God for the meal, and then I thank God for her. And uh, um, uh, it's, it's worked out pretty, pretty well for me doing that. Just letting you guys know. Just a little tip there if you need, need a little help, a little advice. Uh, but I'm thankful for her. But, but do we really show the gratitude that we need to? I look back in the New Testament, uh, an event that took place with Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. There were, there were a bunch of lepers, not leopards, lepers. They were guys that, that were diseased, their, their body. It's a terrible disease that would, that would make them, they, they would be kicked out of the cities. They, they wouldn't have no contact with people. Their families would be destroyed. They wouldn't be able to be a part of their family. They wouldn't be able to be a part of their community. They, if they walked anywhere near somebody, they'd have to cover themselves and, and, and speak, leper, leper's coming. Hey, I'm a leper. Stay away. It's wor- it was worse than social distancing that we experienced a couple of years ago. Although some of them looked like they had leprosy with the way they covered up. But they would be isolated. And, and this event takes place on, on the way to Jerusalem. Jesus, he, he was passing along beside Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten, ten lepers who, who stood at a distance. They were, they were observing the proper protocol here. They stood at a distance and lifted up their voices. And instead of saying, uh, leprosy, leper, leper, they, they shouted this. They, they, were, they were shouting with a loud voice to, to God, standing afar. Now I've lost my place. I'll find it here in a second. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14 when he saw them, he said, now, you got to remember, one of, the, one of the greatest attributes of Jesus Christ is compassion. I, I love that he has compassion. I'm not. I am not. I just be on. I, I need, I don't want more training in that area, but I probably need more training in that area. But Jesus has compassion. He has compassion over these men. They, he, they're, they're separated from everybody that they know. Everything that they love. It's been taken and stripped away from them. He says, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Their leprosy was cleansed. It was was taken away from them. And, And the priest was the only one that could say, you are clean and you can return to society. And so they have a they have a goal now to go see the priest. Verse 15, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, where are the ten cleansed? Where are the nine? We're not ten cleansed, where are the nine was, was, uh, was no one found to return to give praise except this foreigner? I could preach a long message 
regarding that. I could preach a couple of messages regarding those last two verses. But a foreigner returns and he says to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I think of all the obstacles that stood in these men's way to be cleansed. Some accounts have the disciples trying to hush these lepers up and tell them to be quiet. You know, all I know is that they didn't let their leprosy stand in the way of them asking for the healing. And today, well, we let everything stand in the way. They didn't let their leprosy stand in the way, but they let everything else stand in the way of them being thankful. What or who is standing in, your, in the way of you being thankful? What or who is standing in the way of you being thankful? I say that because, because sometimes to say thank you to somebody means you've got to humble yourself. You know, we don't like to do that in our culture today. We don't like to thank people, and I'm getting ahead of my notes, and please forgive me, but here, here I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. Today, you don't hear thank you a lot because you're talking to machines and you got, you're not dealing with people anymore. But I like a good thank you. I like to give a thank you everywhere I go if I can. But we've raised a culture of people that don't give thank you. When, in, the, in the businesses that I was in for years and years, 15 years in banking, and then, then 20 some years, almost 30 years in, in manufacturing, I was a big proponent on what? Saying thank you. In my banking day, that's what you did. You thanked people for their deposit, their withdrawals. You thanked them all the time. You said, thank you. Now, my dad, anybody, some of you know my dad. My dad was a big guy on thank you. He owned a grocery store growing up, and, and for many years he was, a, he was a, a, a guy in the community, and ultimately he was big on saying thank you. And you want to mess up a, a McDonald's cashier? When, when they hand you your change back, say you're welcome and see what happens. Huh? What? What? What do you mean? You're welcome. Well, you, you should be saying thank you because the purchase of that overpriced Big Mac and fries and drink that that cost me used to cost me five bucks. Now that cost me twelve bucks. I just paid portion of your salary today, and you ought to be thanking me for coming in and doing that. <laughs> but you won't say thank you, so I'll say you're welcome. Now, I'm one, I thank everybody. I, I, thank, I thank the girl to drive up Punda. Thank you very much. I, I, thank you, I thank people all the time. But ultimately, we've lost the spirit of, of thanksgiving and gratitude. See, um, in an instant, Christ restores the health, the, the perfect health of these men. And, and what do they do? They're, they're thinking only about themselves. I, I gotta go. I gotta go to the priest. Show myself to the priest so I can restore my relationship with everyone else. And, and one guy, one guy, a foreigner, a guy that doesn't even shouldn't even be doing this. He comes back and he says, "No, the most important thing is the person who gave me the healing." We've lost that because what have we done? We've lost the common sense that God gives us everything. We've lost the thought or the concept that, that everything that we have comes from God. And so we don't thank him. See, we've, we've gotten out of the habit of teaching our, our kids to say thank you. Teach your children to say thank you. Parents do that. It's common courtesy uh, 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 that, that, that seems to be even scorned today. We take for granted the ways that others help us. We fail to thank God for his blessings. Ingratitude is a sin. 
You say, Tracy, I don't see that in the Bible. Well, I'm going to show you here in just a second. I, I believe ingratitude is a sin. It surely is lying and stealing and immorality and, and other sins that, committed, that, that are com- commanded in the Bible to be sins. I think ingratitude is a sin also. One of the Bible, uh, in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it says there, it says, this is a, this is a time of rebellious humanity. Talking about rebellious humanity in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God. Look at that next phrase. Or give thanks to him. They didn't give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking. Futile in their, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Because of why? Their hearts weren't being changed by an attitude of gratitude. A mindset of thanksgiving. An ungrateful heart is a heart that, that, that is cold towards God and indifferent to His mercy and to His love. It's a heart that, that has forgotten how dependent we are on God for everything. See, we wake up in the morning and we think everything's going to be the same. I'm going to, I'm going to kick my feet over the edge of this bed and I'm going to get up and because, because the earth is spinning, unless you're a flat earth person, and I don't know what you believe, but, but uh, the earth is spinning and going around and gravity's holding me here and, and we're, we're going around the sun and all the different things that's going on. You think it's just going to be the same every single day. Let me tell you, it's the same every single day because God has caused it to be. There's going to be the right oxygen mix that I can get up and I can survive. I can, I can make it. Why? Because God has made it to be so. You, you can do some of the things you can do because God has given you the talent and ability to do the things that you do. We get carried away that it's all about us or it's all things that I achieve or that I can do. Let me tell you, it's not. God's given you all these talents and abilities. The pride, pride is something that will destroy you. Once you, once you think that, that there is no God and, and I've done all of this, that pride is what will destroy you. And that's what we face in the United States of America today. Psalms chapter 30, verse 12 says, what, that, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent, O Lord God. I will give thanks to you forever. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your heart to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. The spirit of thanksgiving is always the mark of a joyous Christian. Why should we be thankful? Because God has blessed us. And we should be thankful for each other, for each blessing that he's given us. We've never, uh, we, we seem to never be satisfied though. And, and, and it's a world uh, advertisement. If, if you would take some of the advertisement out of this world, you would be so much more content. See, what a difference it makes when, when you're content with what you have. We have a lot of people who aren't content. They always want more. They, they always want more. And, and content, discontentment causes people to be ungrateful and unthankful. King David prayed a prayer in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 12 through 14. Both riches and honor come from you. And you rule over all. In your hands are power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. I love verse 14, and and it goes like this. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly for all things come from you and 
of your own have you given you? So, so ultimately, here, here's the thing. God, we got to get away from the concept that this is ours. It's all God's. It's all God's. See, see when, you, when you believe that you are capable of taking care of or providing and everything for yourself, and, and believe me, God has given you that ability to do that, but ultimately, when you get carried away with that concept, you're not grateful anymore for God. I, I'm a big believer in, in supporting local church, and, and I'm a tither, but ultimately, here's the thing. A lot of people fail to support the local church because it's, they don't have the concept it all belongs to him anyway. I'm grateful that he's given me the ability to live uh, on 90% and do better than some people that are living on 120%. And they're going in debt every year. I thank God for that. I thank God, I thank, I thank God for, for what he gives and continues to give me. Paul declares in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, I know how, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then that scripture that we all love to quote and take out of context I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. In abundance, it's through Christ. In leanness, it's from Christ. But let me tell you, I can live in both of them. I can live in either. Because I'm grateful to God. A spirit of thanksgiving makes all the difference in the world, people. Are, are you constantly preoccupied with what you do not have? Or have you learned to thank God for what you do have? That's some material things. And I'm going to try to close this up really quickly with thank God for the people in your life. It's easy to take people for granted and even complain because, uh, and become angry because they don't meet your every wish. And that was me. That was me. But, but we need to give thanks for them anyway. All, of, all people around us we need to give thanks for. See, there was a time pre-2007, and Roger tells you I was a good guy, and I, I was. A, I've always been a good guy. That's my mom. But pre-2007, I had, I had managed people for, since, since the early 80s to, to, to 2007. And, and I'd been in the finance area, and I'd been in the manufacturing area. And I'll, I'll be honest, pre-2007, if you asked me, I would probably tell you, I hate people. Has anybody ever been there? Don't raise your hand, okay? Just, just quietly nod and smile a little bit at me. I hate people. I just I I had gotten to a point where I just I hated people. They they constantly disappointed me. They constantly caused me trouble. They constantly cost me more work. They cost the, cost me more money. They they people people were just a drain on my life in a major way. I was angry a lot. I was upset a lot. I, I was trying to find ways to escape, and I did. I, I, I did things like went away to learn to drive Corvettes at Corvette Racing School in Pahrump, Nevada. I, I did stuff to try to get away from everybody and everything because I hated people. Got where I just, I just I, I, it, if I was going to do something, I decided I was just going to do it myself. And that didn't work out too good because I'm not that talented. I remember... remember Dean Martin Roast on television. Some of you guys remember Dean Martin Roast? Don Rickles got up one time and he says, it takes many years 
to become a good comedian. And Dean Martin's sitting right there, and you're not there yet. That's what he said. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that came to my mind, but it was a good one. I, I didn't like people. 2007, God put me in a place where if I couldn't reach it with this hand, I couldn't do it. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't wash myself. I couldn't bathe myself. I, I got, I, the, the place I worked brought a, brought a phone and connected over the internet so that I could answer my phone calls from, from the people that I hated. I got, I, I, I always concerned about protection. So I'm like, I'm like, uh, I, I can't, you know, I can't, can't rack a gun. So, so I got a, I got a revolver set by my bed so that I could kill the people I hate. Uh, and all these things happen. I, I, but God had to change my heart about that. I, I no longer hated people. I loved people because they did everything for me. Love my wife because she did everything for me. Love my family because they took care of me in such a powerful way. Love Brian, he came and mowed my lawn. Amen. Up on Timber Lane, didn't you, buddy? You were there every week mowing my lawn. And I lived on a hill like that. I mean, it was, a, he took care of me. I lost the attitude of ingratitude. And God filled my heart with the spirit of thanksgiving. Gratitude and thanksgiving are, are the aid to overcoming so much in your life. Thanksgiving will, will allow you to overcome bitterness. It, it, thanksgiving can, can help you with your depression. We, we, need to, we need to start giving a thanksgiving pill out to people. Because if you'll become thank, thankful, let, let me tell you, your attitude about somebody will totally change. Guys, get thankful for your wife again. You say, she's terrible. I won't go there. I'll just, I'll just keep going. <laughs> Gals, be thankful for your husband. I know they're terrible, but be thankful for them. You know, it'll change your whole perception about who they are and what they are if you keep, become just thankful. Find something that they do that you can be thankful for. Is it, is it easy? For some of you, it's near impossible. <laughs> but pray that God would open your eyes. See, gratitude and thanksgiving will aid you to overcome addiction, depression, anger, bitterness. We need to take an attitude of gratitude. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand. I know I didn't give you a real effective closing or anything like that, but I do want to quote a couple of scriptures here as I will close. Number one is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. This is Paul again. He says, I give thanks to my God always for you. I give thanks always to my God for you. That, that's my new attitude of gratitude. I give thanks for you. You, you guys have a pastor appreciation day today, but I tell you, I give thanks always for you. Acts chapter 28, verse 15. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, they came far as the forms of uh, Apotus in three taverns to meet us. I love this. On seeing them, this is me on a Sunday morning. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. Paul took, thanked God and took courage. 
I don't do much for you, Tracy. Yeah, you do. You give me courage. You bring me such courage to do what God wants done. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for the spirit of God that's in this place. I ask now, Lord, that you move in a powerful way, transforming the hearts and minds of people as they surrender to you, Lord. There are people here today, Lord, as I I yield to your spirit and what I'm about to say. There are people here today that have a bitterness that needs to be destroyed. Lord Jesus, that can only come from your spirit. Your spirit transforming their lives and changing their lives. Some of you have been hurt physically, mentally, and spiritually by others and you just can't forgive them. I'm going to tell you, it's only the Spirit of God can help you in this area. But why don't you start seeking to be thankful? Be thankful. You're here today. And no matter what anybody has done to you, you're here today in the presence of God his spirit, and people that love you. And today you can be transformed if you'll surrender your bitterness, your hatred, your anger, your ingratitude, if you'll surrender that to the spirit of God and let him plant a heart mind a transformation in you today. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord, to these hearts and these minds in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The altars are open. The prayer teams are here. If you have a need today, we're here for you. We'd love to pray with you, but don't leave today without letting the Spirit of God begin to transform you and give you a heart of thanksgiving. Don't leave today without taking the pill of gratitude. Don't leave today without surrendering your life to the will of God. God bless you. Hello again, Hill family. We hope that you enjoyed our services today. Uh, It's been our great privilege to minister today from the Hill. And uh, again, we pray that the power of God is moving right there where you're at. Amen. And uh, man, we look forward to our next service here on the Hill. But Brian, we got lots of great stuff going on and ways to get involved and get engaged. Yeah, that's right. So just to name a few real quick. Uh, first, we want you to be aware of what we have going on here, right? We've got a few ways that you can do that. We've got our website, which is thehillministries.church. Uh, But we also have, if you're on YouTube right now, you found us there. We've also got Instagram and uh, Facebook. So if you're not following us already, go ahead and do that. Uh, And then go ahead and hit that like button for these videos and share it. That helps us a lot get the the message of the gospel out. So, um, But we'd love for you to connect with this. If God lays it on your heart to support us financially, we've got some ways to do that. Absolutely. You can support us through our website. Uh, We use a platform called Subsplash that allows you to just give securely right off of our website. Uh, And then getting involved, there's a few ways. You can message the church office. You can email office at thehillministries.church. You can send us a Facebook message. You can DM us on Instagram. Uh, But if there's ways that we can pray for you, if you have questions about the church, we want to make sure we get those answered for you. That's right. Uh, But ultimately, we're just glad you're here. Again, we hope that you felt the presence of God in these services. And uh, we just so appreciate our online family. That's right. We'd love to see you in person sometime in the future. If you haven't ever been to the Hill, man, we'd love to have you come visit. We have two services now on Sunday mornings. That's right. uh, 9 and 1045. Two times. That's right. Two times the uh, the power of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we pray that you have a great day, a great week. It's been our privilege to uh, minister to you. God bless you. That's right. Have a great day.